Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order uh, the Bill Park Village Board. Today is December 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, Clerk Karnicki, could you please call the roll? Yes, Trustee Silella. Here. Trustee Cazone. Here. Trustee Murphy. Here. Trustee Patrick. Here. Trustee Tucker. Here. Trustee Wagner. Here. President Bolthus. Here. Let's all rise for the pledge and then remain standing for our short prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Trustee Wagner has a prayer for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we make decisions that might affect the residents, staff, businesses, surrounding communities, and all those that enter the village of Villa Park. And continue to remind us that all we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is public comments on agenda items. Does anyone from the public have any comments? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, any amendments to the agenda? Any of the board members have any amendments? Okay, seeing none. We'll move on to the next item, which is a discussion on the request for a liquor license for 302 East St. Charles Road. Um, on November 2017, and again on June 2019, the Village Board awarded a Class B liquor license to the owner of 302 East St. Charles Road for the establishment of the beverage hub. These licenses expired due to inactivity. Now the owner, the owners have changed uh, their business plan, name of the proposed establishment to select liquors, and are preparing for a new liquor, uh, applying for a new liquor license. And the reason we're here, we have the owner, one of the owners here, James Anthony, uh, has got a little presentation of what they like to would like to do there and we're looking for a consensus from the board if they would like to uh, grant him a, a, a triple a liquor license uh, for that location triple a is for the sale of beer and wine only uh, beer and wine only and also uh, packaged liquors so with that we'll turn it over to uh, james and with his presentation <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. My name is James Anthony, and I'm representing Selective Liquors, LLC, which is a registered assumed entity name of 302 on tap, um, registered with the state of Illinois. I, the village has been extremely helpful, and we came up with a concept, and uh, we've been active with construction and development of the site, um, and came with a vision that we feel would uh, better serve the community. Uh, than just a liquor store. And uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to present that concept to the board and uh, president and village team. Many years ago, uh, in the past, Villa Park uh, had a vacant, uh, rundown uh, building. And uh, the owner of 302 East St. Charles uh, had a vision. And that vision was shaped um, with the guidance of the village of Villa Park. And uh, we came to the conclusion to build a new building uh, with a beautiful storefront of over 500 square feet of glass um, on both sides. Uh, the village uh, you know, requested that we have a more pedestrian friendly front and we brought a new building to the street, to the sidewalk. Um, and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous and thanks to the help of Village of uh, Villa Park and their staff and so forth and management uh, today it has drastically changed and here's the picture of that building so thank you to economic development too for that uh, guidance in the past and now future when coming up with the concept of package B liquor uh, we decided to bring in consultants and partners we, we felt that there needed to be more guidance uh, to shape a concept that would work well for the community as well as uh, you know, enhance the overall experience for Villa Park patrons that visit the shop. And a, a great vision kind of you know, came to play. Some of the big partners that we've worked with are Pour My Beer, Napa Valley Systems, 
I pour it, Spotted Fox has a great operator, and uh, Gold Rush as well, or a few. Uh, we came up with this concept while shaping the store and doing development that we wanted to create a preference of beer and or wine you can taste on site and take a package or case home with you. And we wanted to make sure that environment was controlled with technologically advanced systems, something that's cutting edge and unique uh, to the community that would also bring people to the door. And our space, we found out, just looks so amazingly beautiful uh, and conducive to this type of concept. Uh, as you can see, it has floor to ceiling windows, glass, beautiful countertops, uh, cooler, chandeliers, etc. I mean, the space is absolutely uh, gorgeous for people to come in and uh, sit down and spend time uh, on that retail front in St. Charles Road. The current floor plan and how we shape this concept and idea, we have a a beer wall, which is self-pour, I'm going to get into more information of that. We also have six tables uh, with four seats each by the window, right up front of the store, uh, by the glass, uh, then a, a point of sale system uh, at the entrance and exits, as well as uh, some entertainment uh, gaming machines too, uh, there on the wall uh, located, and there's, there's about five of those that we, we pointed out. Uh, I want to talk about the benefits of the self-pour technology because this is what we're excited, exciting to bring to Villa Park. Uh, when we did research and we think this is a concept that people will uh, enjoy, self-pour technology is currently operating in over 200 locations nationwide. Uh, it's a cutting edge technology. It's the first, actually will be the first in the Chicago suburbs. And we look forward to hopefully bringing uh, people to Villa Park to showcase this technology. Uh, it is not a technology for the getting heavily intoxicated type. Uh, we are not appealing to uh, somebody that wants to overdrink or anything like that or have hard liquor on site. We want to have a controlled place where you can taste beer or wine, whether 32 ounces or 10 ounces, and automatically your, your car will shut off. So uh, the self-pour system eliminates dealing with multiple free samples of alcohol to patrons, uh, which I believe is also too illegal in the state of Illinois if you give many free samples. This would allow people, if they want to taste something, they can come to our controlled environment and taste it on site at this location um, and, and eliminate that. Benefits of self pour continued. So far to date, uh, there has been zero underage incidents associated with self pour technology, and that source is to pour my beer. Uh, high profile users of the, of the self pour technology, this photo is actually in Tapster in uh, Chicago, uh, in Wicker Park. Whole Foods uses it as well. Marriott Hotels, Hilton, Round Table Pizza, and Dave & Buster's, if you're familiar, to just name a few. Uh, multiple craft beers and wines available on tap via self-serve would allow customers the benefit of trying 30 craft beers in one visit. How many places can you do that? That would be so unique, and I think that would be so awesome. It would allow customers to try a variety of craft beers on one setting, and there's no one in the Chicago suburbs that offers that right now, currently, through a self pour system. So less crowds lining up to also get beer and wine, game nights, etc. You're not dealing with one bar bartender trying to, uh, you know, take orders of 20, 30 people rushing to the bar. Self pour just will eliminate that. Uh, we also to issue ID or RFID or wristband cards where consumption is monitored per customer per ounce of pour. In addition to that. Poor experience, a small component that we would like to have uh, to give us a competitive advantage uh, is Gold Rush. And Gold Rush Gaming provides significant marketing dollars we cannot match as a small business owner. And also Gold Rush brings um, you know, us customers to the store and stay competitive with other operators that have gaming. Through our research in the village of Villa Park, we discovered that um, you know, there's a lot of people and patrons uh, by analyzing the financial information of uh, revenue collected through gaming that enjoy gaming and uh, they enjoy that experience. So we wanted to make sure that we could allow that experience uh, for individuals in addition to having increased revenue for the city of Villa Park as well. Another thing that's great about our venue, um, we do have a small space. So we had to find a way to, being that we can't have a kitchen, we had to find a way to generate uh, a great restaurant experience, and we found out that it's surrounding us. I mean, Villa Park has so many great restaurants that have opened up. We've reached out to them, and we've made 
uh, you know, partnerships that if this concept is approved, they would be happy uh, to get increased sales uh, from these game themed events that we plan to provide at the store at 302 on tap. So game days, for example, Bears games, Blackhawks, Dominic's Pizza would be interested uh, to cater those. And it's a Villa Park restaurant. Ladies night, uh, Monte Casino, Mexican Grill, tacos, etc. cetera. Um, wine flight night, we have a beautiful new restaurant or catering uh, group, uh, All Rays Mediterranean Catering uh, for wine tastings and so forth that they can also cater and deliver. Private events, Mike Stelly, we also spoke with them. He would be interested, as well as El Ray's catering, too, for private events, too, if companies would like to host events on site. And uh, we could provide that experience as well. To wrap up, 302 on tap, we, as you can see from our concept and what we're presenting today, is not a liquor store. It is really a different experience offering. We think it's the experience offering that would help the village and the community, as well as the businesses around us, too. Uh, beer and or wine you can taste on site and take a package or case home with you based on your preferences. Technology that would be the first in Chicago suburbs that allows people to taste over 30 craft beers or, you know, 10, 10 wines on top in one setting. Uh, you know, that's just huge. Built-in safety measures also too with the technology that's provided automatically cuts off after 32 ounces of beer and 10 ounces of wine as well as an increase in entertainment experience for patrons of the store who enjoy gaming. Customers get the benefit of tasting the best of also Villa Park restaurants with a themed experience. So with the tables and the high tops, we think it's going to be a very inviting space, much, much better and improved than a liquor store, and it would be a place that uh, people will like to convene uh, you know, on their weekends and for theme nights and game nights and uh, have a better experience. I thank the board and Mr. President and Village, Village uh, team for uh, hearing my presentation. So if any of the board members have any questions for uh, James, uh, now's the time. I just would like a little more clarification on how this self-pour works and how the limits uh, sure. uh, allowed work is, you know, 32 ounces is, it, how does it work? So basically 32 ounces, uh, it cuts off. They have to come to the, the uh, person in the front. They would do a sobriety, you know, test for their best set training and see if they should be given more or not, uh, depending on how the individual is. I, uh, the, you know, the, you know, the whole point of having this is that we're not trying to attract people that are coming. We're trying to attract people that are coming to taste different types of beers, different types of wines, and then cut them off, you know, after that point and have an experience. It's not a, it's not like a bar environment. So the RFID cards allow you to measure that and monitor that very, very closely. Is there a charge for the cards or? No, we give the charge typically when they come in, uh, they would give an ID as well as like a credit card and so forth. And then we give them a data card or wristbound. And then they would go to the, uh, you know, to the wall and they have 32 ounces or 10 ounces of wine. There's also a, log a logarithms that will calculate if they're mixing wine and beer because you may want to have wine as well as beer. Uh, and then it will just stop uh, as soon as they hit their limit. So it's all computer controlled? All computer controlled. Okay. Right. Trustee Seattle. I'm just wondering, with the 32 ounces at no charge, is there a possibility of a patron coming in, experiencing 32 ounces of different beers or 10 ounces of wine, and then leaving without a purchase? Uh, no, they have their credit card. I mean, we don't give any free beer. We don't offer any free so there, beer. there's a credit card attached? Right, too. yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, we don't I give any free samples. That didn't come across that way. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. Just leave. Um, I, I don't know if you were. There's a... A place in Elmhurst that does this it's called Red Arrow, and they opened up a couple of years ago. I have a self port uh, port system. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. to see that. I have yeah, it's on uh, it's on First Street, just east of uh, York Road. Okay, on the north side of the street. I've I've checked that out. I yeah. did. I, I mean, it's it's a great concept. It works well. Yeah, um, I've been there a couple of times, and it, and it's a it's a good idea. And like you say, it's a way for you know to monitor you know how people are drinking through the course of the night. Right. My question is, how many taps do you plan on having? We plan to have 36 taps. So okay. we would like to have 30 craft beers on top, six taps for, uh, you know, wine on the wall. Uh, with Napa Valley Systems, too, we like to have maybe the potential of having also uh, three machines with 12 wines on tap, too, where it actually shows the bottles. Uh, concept of uh, that wine station is in 64 wines out of Naperville, uh, which has been vetted there, and it's working really, really well. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, also, too, that we could have non -al non alcoholic on top as well for the non drinkers uh, or coffee, too. So we have options for other things. So uh, I had some ideas that, you know, maybe during the day we could offer coffee or even in the evening offer some coffee on top as well, too. We could do that with the system. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. Are you planning on having any kind of food during the, like in the evening? I know you had mentioned, you know, partnering with Dominic's right. and my, I mean, is that going to be every night? Are you going to have food there? We would like to give the option and based on theme nights, if people want to order food, we would bring the catering in. Uh, we would also too, do private events too as well, where we would be bringing food in as part of that private event package through okay. catering companies in Villa Park. And then my last question is why, what changed from, because this was supposed to originally be yeah. a high-end liquor store right? and now it's going to beer and wine. What, what, cause that change the change the change caused when we brought in uh consultants as we were uh you know doing the the liquor store it, it was it was so nicely built and it was so inviting and we felt that it would be more enhancing for the community and that's what the community really is looking for versus you know we see a lot of tobacco on the street we see also a lot of uh, liquor stores and so forth already kind of covering their bases really well so we didn't feel that we would add more value as just a liquor store at that point okay, okay sorry Thank you, Patrick. Um, just one quick question. Um, you said that um, you have a system in place that monitors consumption as far as with a debit card goes. So somebody uses a debit card or a credit card, swipes it, gets 32 ounces of beer, right? So they actually get handed a data card or a wristband okay. when they hand their credit card. Okay. And it shows the amounts on the monitor, how much they're spending per ounce. Is there anything that prohibits somebody from using multiple credit cards or debit cards it or would, consuming more? Yeah, because you would know as the person who's coming in, I would know right away if they're changing their credit card. So it's one card would you know represent this person or this party or what have you, and we would we would monitor how many ounces and how much has been coming out per card per individual. So okay. individuals get you know obviously ID'd, uh, verified that they're over 21, and then they hand a data card. I, we hand a data card to them and then it monitors uh, per that person how much they've consumed. And then uh, what's your max occupancy? I, I believe I have to check that I actually asked the fire department and they're getting back to me. I did ask Mike Byron over there and he said to me he'll, he'll get me those numbers. Uh, so I don't wanna shoot off numbers from the hip, uh, but I will like to verify that, uh, how many people we could have uh, on site. And then how many employees do you plan on having uh, working per shift? So typically, you know, with this system, what's great about it is, is that, you know, one or two people uh, can monitor the wall or what have you, but we probably plan on having four people on site um, at all times. Thank you. This is my understanding. This is a new liquor application. It's not going to be an extension of the old. No, this is a new application. The, the old one was a class B. This would be a class AAA. AAA. Okay. okay. Trustee Wagner. Thank you. Um, I like your concept. Thank you. I, that, that space has been kind of uh, vacant for a long time. I like the fact that you're going to partner with other restaurants. Where will you be serving the food? How do you do? You have a will there be a, a small kitchen or something? How how is that going to work? So they bring the food in, and in the back area there, we would plate you know the food or what have you, and the high tops are already there. So they actually provide the plating and the uh, uh, silverware. Uh, with the catering companies like Dominic's is a full caterer. So he, he, he basically will provide everything we need uh, We basically will clean up the mess after we're done and uh, Have to you know take it to the trash uh, But we're expecting that all the food and everything after it's you know plated by the caterer and everything like that is just completely disposable Yeah, just a suggestion you may want to include cider as part yes. of what you're having. Yeah, in the tappers, we can yeah. have that as well, and that's a uh, option. demographic that's more partial to cider than beer. Yes. Yep. That's 100% correct, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good catch. You you, you know a lot <laughs> about That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Murphy? Yes, President Bothus, can you remind me on the liquor licenses and the gaming? Uh, I thought it would, they had to have a full liquor license to do gaming. Can they have a type of a liquor license and not have the gaming? Or can you remind me how all that will go? They can have the gaming if they have a poor license, and a AAA is a poor license. Okay. But for only uh, beer and wine. Okay. Right? Okay. Trustee Tucker, I'm sure you're ready to answer the question. How's the parking going to work? <coughs> 
parking right now the advantage that we have is uh, the dentist uh, does not work at night um, which is huge so uh, the parking is pretty vacant most of the nights uh, and completely open um, so I think that parking should be fine um, and uh, we have plenty of spaces so I, I hope that's a uh, I hope that's something I can face um, eventually but right now um, I'd like to get the spots filled uh, as soon as as soon as possible okay. any other questions I have one more question sure sure how are you going to prevent somebody from sharing yeah so uh, it depends and I actually asked this question uh, to pour my beer I the person who ha issues the cards has to monitor the people on site if <laughs> They hit 32 ounces, the card automatically goes out. So you get notified and they have to come back and return the card or do the sobriety test. So it's never happened, and I've actually asked this from Pour My Beer, and also I pour it. It's ne this issue has never happened uh, because the, you, you are monitoring each person as an individual throughout their experience. And on that space of 2,400 square feet and that wall, uh, they have to come back after those 32 <laughs> ounces are done and the card will run out. So you will. So see it's them. not possible that a friend it takes one, you know, test you know, one, it, yeah. and then gives it to their friend to get over thirty-two ounces. Well, it wouldn't work. So it stops at thirty-two <laughs> ounces. So if they hand it, if you hand it to another friend, and you've reached your thirty-two ounces on that card, it's you're out. So the card won't work. That's the uh, Murphy. Yes. Was there an issue? It sounded like there will not be a kitchen. Was there an issue where you chose it's too not small. to have a kitchen? It's, it's just too small of a space. We don't have anywhere to accommodate that for the, um, for the space size. We're only about 2,400 or 2,500 square feet. Um, and with the uh, you know, storage area that we have, we just couldn't get a, a kitchen in. It was just too tight of a space. And some of other establishments that have this concept has there been any uh, I don't know the word I want to use but if someone was going to ask me to do a sobriety test I would take that um, not personal but kind of an infringement of my rights have you met any type of resistance like that in any other establishments that offer this type of product I mean it seems what yeah. type of sobriety test? I mean, I have well, I mean, you would test see if they're intoxicated. Are they are they you know walking funny? Do they you know maybe you need to stop drinking or what have you? So, I, um, you know, it's a, basically the Bassett training kicks in, and and you're you're analyzing that individual through your training. So it's just field observation. You're not doing breathalyzer. No. Uh, yeah. No. No. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be like any other uh, right establishment that serves right. alcohol. It's, yeah. it's, it's nothing the, unique. It, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. We're, we're, we're really the concept is that you're coming there and you're you're tasting beer or wine, and um, you have exposure to taste a large variety of beer and wines. You know, based on your allowed ounce that's there, that's you know open to you. And basically, um, you know, you can buy a package of that and take it home. It's not a, It's not if you if you really are looking to drink heavy, it's the wrong place to go. You don't want to go to a self pour place. Uh, it's just not the place to go. It's you know something you would you know take your wife to a date to etc. Have a great experience. So it's kind of a, like a wine tasting or a beer right. tasting uh, right. uh, party. Right. So. And you could and you could take that package home with you based on what you like. So if if you for example uh, taste you know bells and you really like bells beer uh, or hazy Jane or what have you or uh, you know Gumblehead or something like that and you love that beer that case will also be there. Take it home and. You know, you would have never known that, or a certain site, or take a case home and and uh, and go. It's that's the whole concept. Yes, Tessie Wayne. Do you envision having opening up for private parties? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's actually a big goal of ours. Uh, and we've seen it done well. So I actually wanted to bring up, uh, you know, Market Table in Elmhurst has like private events and dining and you know tastings and pour and stuff like that. Right on York, I believe it is Road. It seems to be very successful. I see it very busy whenever I walk down that area. So uh, we would love to host private events for uh, you know uh, organizations, even also do fundraisers and so forth. And we see that, and then uh, you know closing those nights for private events if possible. Any other questions? Okay. 
Yes, Chris. One more. Um, you're talking about gaming in there. Yeah. Are, are you opening it up for people just to come into gaming only and not even do your core? Or how are you going to monitor that? So gaming, gaming is basically, uh, we want gaming to bring people to SOAR, and there's also two people that enjoy gaming as part of their experience tasting. If they choose to game on machines, they're, if you notice, on the floor plan uh, to the far right of the wall. So I have them kind of separate from uh, the poor wall as well as uh, other areas of the establishment. Um, but, you know, they... They, if they choose to game, they choose to game. Uh, if they choose to uh, taste beer and wine and also shop as well and game a little bit too and kind of mix it all together, uh, they're fine to do so. So, uh, you know, we want it to be inviting and, and any patron that wants to enjoy our facilities is open to do so. So, for other words, they could come in and game only and not even be there for the poor tap is what you're saying. I, I don't, I, it depends on the customer. So the reason I asked him to make this presentation, because this is a different concept than what we've had here in uh, Villa Park. So uh, basically, you know, wanted to get the board's opinion if they'd be willing to uh, issue him a, uh, a liquor license to, uh, for this uh, establishment. So before he went through the whole process of... Uh, background checks and everything. You know, all the employees will have to have Bassett training. Sure. So, um, before he goes through the whole process of applying to get the consent of the board or the feeling of the board. So, if we could get uh, opinions so we know what kind of direction to give him, Trustee Wagner. I'm, I'm favorable to this. I mean, Trustee it's been vacant for a long time. It looks like a good concept. I would say yes. Trustee Tucker? No. Murphy? Um, right now, I'd very much like to see something in that spot, and I'm not adverse to that type of pouring. But based on the current plan, I would be a no. I have a concern over the food issue or potential lack of food, maybe, depending on partnering with other locations. I also have a concern over someone trying 30 craft beers in one visit. It's sounding like that's a marketing opportunity, but that... I think is a lot of beer for one person to taste in an evening. So I would very much like to see it move forward, but I would like to see some modifications to the current plan. So my vote would be no based on what we're looking at today. Okay. So what, to help them out, what would you like to be modified? Well, I don't have a problem with the self-pour, but perhaps the limits, I don't know. I guess I'd need help from the so beer drinkers. two servings. 30. Two servings? Yeah, it's basically two servings. 32 ounces is like two servings of beer. Well, uh, yeah. But they could come back up if they're... Um, if they, yeah, but we usually, I mean, you know, depending on the beset training or what have you, the individual, or they would just cut them out and say, hey, there's no more, uh, you know, no more drinking. So it's actually much more controlled than a bar experience or what have you because we're monitoring it per ounce. That's actually, um, to speak to that, that's actually why you we're doing this is to have better control of that from not someone over drinking. Right. And the other concern I have is the gaming again. Okay. So you're a no? I'm a no right now, yes. Okay, we'll go sure. down this side over here. Trustee uh, Patrick? Um, I think it's a great concept, but uh, I also will say no. Ciela? I, I think it's a, a great idea. I think it's something that uh, Bill Park could uh, enjoy. Um, I don't think the food uh, distribution should be an issue. We've got others that don't have full kitchens that mm -hmm. offer dining to their patrons, so I'd be a yes. Okay. Um, I like the concept. Um, I agree with Trustee Murphy, though. I'd, I'd like to see food there on a regular basis. Uh, but as far as the concept, um, like I say, I've been the, the Red Arrow in Elmhurst, and from what I saw, it, it's not a cheap place to drink, and when you're drinking by the ounce, very few people are going to drink 100 ounces of beer there. Right. So uh, I would be a yes for it. So you'd be willing to issue a license? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's three. three. <laughs> so I would vote yes, too. So with that, we'll um, prepare a uh, code change to increase the number of AAA license. Uh, so, and then we'll run that through the board. And probably sometime we'll start end of the month, that, no, the 16th maybe. And so two readings, so it'd be the 16th and then um, January 13th would be the second reading. So.
Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, board. Thank you for your time, Anthony. Okay. okay, with that, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which is the minutes from the board uh, meeting held on, oh, wait, let me start over. Minutes from the board meeting held on November 25th, 2019, and the bill listing for the week of November 25th, 2019, and the total of $1,038,676 and three cents. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? Trustee Cazone? I'll make that motion. Trustee Wagner? I'll second the motion. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Seeing none, roll call vote. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Silella? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. President Bolton? Yes. Okay, number uh, item seven is the first reading of an ordinance uh, to be codified. Uh, let's see. Boy, I'm having a little trouble here tonight. First reading of an ordinance uh, adopting a budget for the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, for all corporate purposes in lieu of an annual, annual appropriation ordinance and for the fiscal year commencing on January 1st, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020. Manager Kenyon. Thank you, Your Honor. The Village's CY 2020 budget ordinance provides for the continued provision of village services as well as significant capital investment as discussed during the Village's budget presentation held at the November 25th, 2019 board meeting. The budget draft has been available for public inspection since November 11th at Village Hall and on the Village's website. The budget covers the 12-month period from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. This is the first reading of the budget ordinance with ordinance adoption planned for De December 16th, 2019. Thank you, Your Honor. And okay, this being the first reading, we don't need a motion. This is just for discussion only. Does any of the board members have any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move this on to our next meeting on December 16th. Item 7B is for the first reading of an ordinance levying taxes for the fiscal year of the Village of Villa Park, Page County, Illinois, commencing on the first day of January 2019 and ending on the 31st day of December 2019. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The 2019 tax levy process is well underway. The Library Board approved their levy on September 25th the Village Board adopted a resolution estimating the tax levy on October 14, 2019, and several abatement ordinances were approved on November 11, 2019. The final version of this ordinance will be updated to reflect the rollover bonds. The total levy for the Village and Library is $12,314,665 and has been abated to $10,542,714 an increase of 2.3%. The final amount will likely be reduced by DuPage County due to tax caps. Majority of the levy is subject to a 1.9% tax cap plus new growth. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Again, this is also a first reading, so we don't need a motion. It's just for discussion. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move that to December 17th for a second reading. So item 7C is the first reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park to Page County, Illinois, amending the Villa Park Municipal Code. Manager Keene. Thank you, Your Honor. The regular meeting of the Village Board held on October 28, 2019, the Board voted to proceed with the necessary amendments to Village Code to accommodate changes to state law as it relates to the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act. The ordinance being considered amends those sections of the Villa Park Municipal Code regulating cannabis, which predate the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act, which will be set forth in Article 20, Chapter 13. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Again, this is the first reading, uh, so we don't need a motion. Anyone from the board have any questions or comments on this item? Trustee Tucker. I have a question on why H was removed. Pardon me? Part H was removed. Part H. Oh, on the penalties. I think the penalties are coming here. Some of them. Yeah. I don't have card age. So we remove. Oh, so we're removing the whole section. You're talking about section 16.103 or 16.112. That uh, would be 16.112. 112.
where we remove penalties if a person under 21 years of age is convicted of violation of section 1612 or involving a tobacco production electrical cigarettes alternative products oh, and violation why did we remove that was there something we revised earlier on that that we took that out I believe that will come up after that penalties come up through the Planning and Zoning Commission? No. No? I would have to ask uh, Ms. Orr why that occurred, but I would at this point in time, without having it in front of me, I would guess that there's a general penalty provision within your code, and it would refer over to that. So there would be a pen uh, sure, somewhere would, else would, in our code yes, somewhere, that's I, why we removed it? I would, okay. I would venture to say that's exactly why. Okay. So we can I, get that clarified by the second reading. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know why we removed that. So that was shot uh, up here for the penalties. I know we had some discussion on them before on some issue that we were verifying through the police department for something or other. And I wondered if that was what it was moved somewhere else or that we removed it. The manager is just pointing out to me that that question of yours is on the next item on the agenda. Oh, I was one too soon. Okay. Okay. So it's probably incorporated into uh, the next one. <coughs> okay. So any other questions? Seeing none. Okay. Well, this will be advanced to the December 16th meeting for a second reading. Okay. okay. Item number eight is the second and final reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park to Pace County, Illinois, amending the, Illinois, the Villa Park Municipal Code related to the use of cannabis. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> the regular meeting of the Village Board held on October 28, 2019, the Board voted to proceed with the necessary amendments to Village Code to accommodate changes to state law as it relates to the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act. The ordinance being considered modifies Villa Park Municipal Code to regulate the use of cannabis in Villa Park in accordance with state law. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. We have a motion for the ordinance. Trustee Wagner. Want to make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Trustee Cazone. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. So you want to, you got where uh, the correction is, where Trustee Tucker's uh, thing was? Oh, I think it's under K, Your Honor. So that was <coughs> under um, what section? Yeah, so it's K in, in section uh, 13, 200, 0, 0, 2003, so in what we're voting on now. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call vote. Trustee Murphy? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Tucker? No, I can't vote until I know that answer. <laughs> President Boltus? Yes. Okay. That passes. Um, we'll move on to resolution uh, number nine, which is a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving a contract with DEM Services, Inc. of Addison, Illinois, for asbestos abatement and management services at 631 East Wildwood Avenue in the amount not to exceed $29,700 and waiving the requirement for the f of open and competitive bidding. Manfred Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The village owns the property located at 631 East Wildwood Avenue. To assist with the sale of this property, the village is taking steps to remediate asbestos, which has been discovered in several areas of the building and must be remediated. The village solicited proposals from 10 companies and received four proposals for the abatement. The lowest apparent proposal was submitted by DEM Services, Inc. of Addison, Illinois, in the amount of $29,700. Funds for this expense will be taken from the capital outlay fund of the St. Charles Road TIF, TIF number 4, count number 28-502-01299. Thank you, Your Honor. So a motion for the resolution. Trustee Wagner. I can make that motion. And a second. Trustee I'll second. Gala. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Trustee Wagner. Uh, just for members of the public and... <clears throat> For myself personally, just the difference between the RFP process and the bidding process, it seems very similar. I mean, we have four bids there. Uh, how did uh, how did we solicit the bids? Is there something different about the process? Manager Keener. 
Your Honor, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have uh, Public Works describe how they went about the uh, proposals uh, for this particular item. Rich Salerno is. Good evening. Um, the request for proposals in this project uh, was studied by past projects of similar nature. We've had other projects uh, within the village that required asbestos abatement. So we looked at the requirements uh, for those projects, had the list of uh, those specified consultants that specialized in this work. So we reached out to them um, to see for proposals. Okay, so we didn't publicize it. We just it was no, it was publicized. It was publicized. So, mm -hmm. so it seems very similar to the open bidding process. It is similar, but uh, actually just it speeds up the process, especially in, with a special uh, work effort in this nature. So what's the difference between the two? That's what we Let's want to know. Tucker. Thank you. I mean, uh, requesting permits is you're going out and asking them to do it. What's the difference between an open competitive bidding and what you did? Open, competi open competitive bidding requires that there's a 14-day period <clears throat> that it's out available to the public. It's advertised publicly. I mean, both are very similar in nature, <clears throat> but how I said, I mean, this here gives a little bit more leeway and expedite the process. But we are doing competitive pricing to make sure that in the village's best interest that we are getting uh, fair prices. In this case here, as was stated, we uh, had 10 different companies, corporations pick up the uh, the proposals. So the only difference, if I'm understanding you correctly, is one takes 14 days to a minimum spread out of there. 14, minimum a minimum 14, 14 days that is to spread out there. Correct. Which would be the open and competitive bidding, where what you did is you went to these companies. They basically did a bid on it. They proposed, the they, sent, they proposal. gave us prices. We actually had an on-site pre-bid meeting proposal meeting, I should say, I apologize, so that they were able to actually visit the site, uh, inspect what was pro being proposed so they had the best chance possible to give the best price to the village. Anyone else? Trustee Patrick? Uh, why are we expediting the process? We were trying to get the property, uh, a couple of things with the property here that we own. One, we're in the process of getting out of the floodplain and obviously getting it ready for uh, to be transferred over. Any other questions? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Tucker? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Silella? Yes. President Bultis? Yes. Item 10 is public comments on non-agenda items. Did anyone sign up? No, I have no Do we have anyone from the audience that have any comments on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to the clerk's report. Um, yes, I have a, um, just to announce that the um, SALT meeting is meeting on the 11th, which is next week, Wednesday of next week, and uh, they will have a program as usual at 11 a.m. Um, Officer Bregman uh, usually brings in um, <coughs> some sweets and things uh, at 1030 and so there's just some visiting time and then the meeting starts and the commission senior concerned commission will again uh, host the lunch so it's going to be a very nice lunch based on a, kind of a Christmas theme and it should be a lot of fun so the seniors of, um, and others with them can attend and they're welcome and that's all thank you okay, thank you uh, trustees report will start to the left trustee uh, Murphy Okay, oh boy, well, we've got a really busy week this week, and I'll try not to steal everybody's thunder, or I could just do it and and continue to move on. Um, we've got things coming up. We've got the Rotary event tomorrow night. I think I'll let Rich, Rich you want to take that one on a little bit later, more detail on the Rotary event tomorrow. Um, we've got a Nedstra event going on on Thursday at 4.30. We've got the Crosstown Willowbrook basketball game on Friday, <coughs> uh, coffee with the board on Saturday, and lots going on on Saturday. Um, I'll let one of the other trustees, maybe Trustee Patrick, whoever would like to, but we've got the Maven Market at uh, Fuel and Cream on Saturday the 7th. We've got our coffee with the board. We've got Joyful Traditions. 
Uh, I believe there's a St. Nick's Market going on at the library, so rest up on Friday because Saturday's looking like a really busy big day. Um, as far as the following week, we've got pet photos with Santa, so get those pet photo outfits ready. <laughs> pet photos with Santa from 5.30 to 7.30 at Cortezzi on Monday the 9th. And I've got a note here on Thursday the 12th that there's a senior Christmas celebration at the rec center from 12 to 2. And if the agenda continues to be what they were discussing over Thanksgiving, it sounds like there's going to be some wonderful carolers there coming in from Elmhurst. And that should pretty much take us right into our next board meeting, which is scheduled for the 16th. Okay. Phew. Just to talk. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I got an invitation or an invite that Community Congregational Church wanted the Village of Villa Park to know that they're having a Christmas recital on Friday, uh, December 13th at 7 p.m. Um, that's at 410 South Cornell. It's the corner of Cornell and Highland. Um, they are having world-class musicians performing, a Tabitha O oh on the violin, a Sandra Tomasa on the piano, and then they have a Justin Bechtel on the clarinet. These are world announced uh, performers. <coughs> they are doing a Christmas performance at the church for nothing. So it's a free concert for people that would like to come out and get in the Christmas spirit. Um, the only other thing is that uh, next Tuesday, there will be a park and rec meeting at the Iowa Center at seven o'clock. Trustee Wagner. Thank you, President Bothus. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, the Traffic and Safety Commission will be meeting here uh, Tuesday, December 10th at 8 p.m. Uh, and then, uh, as Trustee Murphy already mentioned, uh, the, li the Friends of the Library will be sponsoring a St. Nick's Market, and I think it goes from 6 till 9, and there'll be a lot of great local crafters there, so I would encourage folks to visit that as well. So, And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Patrick. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I have a few things, actually. Uh, so on Thanksgiving, um, the uh, Philip family home located at uh, 39 West Madison uh, had their illumination event uh, where he uh, lit up his house. Um, if you haven't seen his display of Christmas lights, uh, it's really nice. Um, he's been doing this for a few years now. Uh, but it also acts as a drop-off location for the Toy Express Children's Charity for Kids. Um, where they're accepting new toys uh, to go towards this charity. And again, that drop-off location is located at 39 West Madison. Uh, look for the uh, Christmas lights. Can't miss them. Can't miss them. <laughs> really good display. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, this Thursday, December 5th at 7 p.m., uh, Ardmore School PTA will be having their Christmas gathering at Fuel and Cream. Um, Saturday, December 7th, uh, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, at Albright Middle School will be Winter Palooza. Uh, they will be hosting a pancake breakfast, uh, carnival games, selfies with Santa, a holiday shop, live music by Albright Band, and a huge raffle and auction. So if you can make it out to that as well. Um, lastly, uh, I've been uh, contacted by a few residents uh, regarding some of the streets, and I was just looking for staff input. Um, on the Astor and Myrtle Road project, as well as the Sunset, Plymouth, and Vermont Road project, as far as like a timeline, when it will begin, and when it should be completed. Yeah, we can give you that after the uh, after the meeting. If that's okay. Okay. So, Trustee Shiala. I think um, my fellow board members got everything covered, so <laughs> I, I have no report this evening. Trustee <laughs> okay. Cazone. Yeah, same thing here. We're right. good. Yes. One more. We, I believe we have a toy donation box downstairs in the Village Hall as well. Um, Manager Keener, do you know who is sponsoring that by chance? That is a very good question. I do not, but I can certainly let you know. Well, I'm sure it's a good cause. So there's a big empty box down there right now, and it's looking for toy donations, and I believe it's there till somewhere probably around December the 18th. So we're looking forward to that one filling up as well. Okay. All right, I just want to remind everybody our next board meeting is on the 16th at uh, 7 o'clock right here.
So because of the holiday season, we're doing different uh, Mondays this, this month. Um, again, remind you of joyful traditions at, uh, and generously put on by our businesses in town. So uh, I think that starts at 6 o'clock or 6 o'clock, yeah. Mm -hmm. Santa arrives shortly thereafter, I'm sure. So uh, it's really a, a fun event. Uh, hopefully, it looks like the weather is going to be good this year. So cross our fingers. Um, again, we'll see you on Saturday for coffee with the board, and I think everything else has been covered. So we'll move to the manager's report. Just a couple items, Your Honor. I just I'd like to thank uh, Parks and Rec for putting up all the trees on the prairie path in preparation of the joyful traditions and putting the lights on the large tree uh, on the prairie path next to Ardmore, getting ready for uh, Saturday's event. Second item, Your Honor, board is. Tomorrow night, Tuesday, uh, December uh, 3rd, uh, is the uh, 47th annual Rotary of Villa Parks annual Christmas dinner and auction. So we should have probably about 75 auction items. All the proceeds go to support local organizations or uh, students, children uh, within Villa Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you all. So the next item is executive session, but we don't need one, so we'll just skip that and we'll just go right on to uh, adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Trustee Wagner? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Trustee Murphy? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned and we'll be back on the 16th. Thank you all for coming.